Good afternoon. Or should I say evening? Uh, morning. Morning? At any rate, I am the Game Master. Pleased to make your acquaintance. Before we begin, there is something I must tell you. You see, my job is to draw you into this world with my voice and cards. Which is why I believe it best for you to play with the sound on. In fact, I insist on it. However, as you can see, my voice is subtitled, so you can always read along as well. Now then, are you ready? Let's begin. <clears throat> Welcome to Voice of Cards. You are about to take the first steps of your adventure. Through a realm of sword and sorcery you will travel, battling bloodthirsty monsters as you strive to realize your ambitions. I have every faith you will accomplish great things here. I... I am merely a witness to your exploits. Now then, your departure draws nigh. May your journey be a safe one. We begin in a cave. The surrounding rocks are slimy with damp. It feels as if some foul creature could leap out from the shadows at any moment. Yet in this horrible place gathers a fellowship of three adventurers. One is a young woman. You can tell just by looking at her, she enjoyed a good upbringing. Another is a stoic warrior. He stands at the ready, scanning his surroundings for any sign of threat. Last but not least is the old man. He has a sagely air and gazes into the darkness stretching out before him. These adventurers seek a certain treasure hidden. before you. It has rather conspicuous handles. takes hold of the handles and pushes as hard as he can, but the door doesn't so much as budge. The stoic man winds his leg back and lets fly a powerful kick into the door. As his foot connects, the door trundles to the side, so it was one of those sliding contraptions. Something leaps out at the Fellowship from the darkness. And fight. Thank you. 
these adventurers have seen their fair share of battle and defeat their attackers with ease. As the trio approaches the treasure chest, an awful rumbling resounds deep in the cave. You shall not have it, a voice growls. Before the wary trio appear creatures the likes of which they've never seen. young woman edges around the monster's bulk to stand before the treasure chest. There is treasure inside, no doubt about it, but it's locked tight. The woman slides the simple key into the lock. The chest clicks open. Inside is what appears for all the world to be an ordinary medicine bottle. At last we've retrieved the royal treasure, the old man says. The woman and warrior exchange a nod. Their quest complete, the triumphant trio put the cave behind them. This is Castle Advent, 
Queen Nilla reigns over the kingdom from within its walls. In the crowded audience chamber jostle all manner of knights, adventurers, and bounty hunters. The white-robed adventurers stand close to the throne. A palace guard calls over the tumult. Be silent. Her royal majesty graces us with her presence. The cacophony ceases the moment Queen Nilla enters the chamber. Seated upon the throne, the queen faces the crowd. Her lips part. Thank you all for heeding my call to slay the dragon. Whatever it takes to defeat this reawakened evil, I ask that you do it. Whomsoever conquers this beast will be honored for ages to come and handsomely rewarded. At that, the gathered crowd cheers loud enough to shake the castle's very foundations. Leave the dragon to us, your majesty, say the white-robed adventurers, as if the beast's demise at their hands is assured. Indeed, you did well to reclaim the royal treasure, the queen replies. I thank you for my stomach becomes most upset without it. So the treasure is a staple of the royal medicine cabinet. It puts my mind at ease to know the ivory order offers its aid in slaying the dragon. The trio are disciples of the ivory order, a charitable organization beloved the realm over. Indeed, Anyone would think this illustrious trio the heroes of our tale. But they'd be wrong. So we just gotta slay the dragon and we'll be drowning in gold. The man trails off, drooling over unknowable fantasies. Beside him, a strange creature lets out a chirping coo. Uh, pay attention, because this is important. There he is, or there you are, I should say, the hero of our tale. A humble bounty hunter. You love little in this realm more than coin. A seemingly tedious fellow who doesn't hesitate to claim the title of hero for yourself. When you heard about the quest to slay the dragon, it was the promise of reward that lured you to the castle. Now then, if you wish to officially register for the hunt, see me so I can get your signature. You wonder why you need to sign anything? But head for the guard anyway. Shall we?
Have you registered yet? Says the guard. Scared of the dragon? Scoffs the guard. We of the Ivory Order will be the ones to restore peace to the land, brags a white-robed man. My colleague made me come along, but he didn't mention we were going on a quest to slay the dragon, she says, trembling. You'll need tough gear if you're going to beat the dragon, the man tells you. Keep your ears perked. You never know what you might hear that'll lead you in the right direction, the man says, you think. That reward for slaying the dragon is as good as mine barks the man. You think the dragon's really as tough as they say? Asks the man, his knees knocking together. The man takes one look at your companion and shrieks, Monster! If the heroes of the Ivory Order are hunting the dragon, he's as good as dead, says the man, relief spreading across his face. The Ivory Order trio stands before you. They seem not the most approachable of parties, but... You don't think you have anything to say. On second thought, yeah, you still don't. You inquire about their identities. We are disciples of the Ivory Order. It is our duty to aid the realm and its people however we can. The Order's principal focus is developing medicine to distribute to people throughout the world. They begin blathering an answer to a question you didn't even ask. Sensing a long lecture ahead, you seize on the first chance to extricate yourself from their presence. You try to speak to the trio again, but they're too involved in hashing out some sort of plan of attack to pay you any mind. You try to speak to Queen Nilla, but a guard blocks your path. Figures a nobody bounty hunter can't just walk up to a queen and start chatting like they're best friends. Go talk to the guard on the left to sign your name on the register. Sign here, says the guard, handing you a pen and paper. You sign your name. A fine name. After you've signed, the guard motions to the strange creature beside you. The monster, too. You sign your companion's name as well. Mar. Mar, your friend and sometimes traveling companion. 
Though he can't speak the human tongue, he seems to understand it well enough. Thank you. Now we'll know what to have engraved on your tombstones. Can't ask the dead what name to mark their grave with, after all. The guard chortles. You want the reward as badly as you don't want to die. You figure you better make some strong friends. Offer to join forces with the Ivory Order Trio? We select few are sufficient to defeat the dragon. We require no additional aid. And we certainly don't require the aid of a no-name Wastrel. With that, the trio takes their leave of the castle. No way am I adventuring with anyone who keeps that sort of creepy company, he says. I'll let the Order handle this. Me, I'm heading home. Never know what you might hear that'll lead you in the right direction. The man wanders off somewhere, muttering to himself. You'll need tough gear, the man says, wandering off. Let us depart. We have a realm to save. He grabs his less than enthused colleague by the wrist and drags her off. You catch a glimpse of the terrified look on her face, and then the two disappear out of the audience chamber. You ask him to team up, but he refuses angrily. I ain't splitting the reward with nobody. You weren't planning on sharing either, so you don't try to change his mind. Before you even open your mouth to ask him to team up, he cuts you off. Thanks, but no thanks. Find some good people to help you fight the beast. You're less likely to die that way, says the guard. Don't get yourself killed out there, says the guard curtly. Asking Queen Nilla to join you is beyond preposterous. Better not even try. The castle will close to visitors shortly. Please be on your way. You're shooed out of the castle. In the end, you set out, just the two of you, to hunt the dragon. How may I help you? The proprietress inquires. Will that be all? The proprietress asks. A weapons merchant accosts you in the street despite your best efforts to mind your own business. He speaks to you in a voice barely above a whisper. You want the most powerful weapon there ever was? 
he conspicuously checks his surroundings before revealing this weapon of apparent renown to you. <laughs> to hear him tell it, this is a legendary weapon and one of its kind at that. It can be yours for 20,000 gold pieces, he says. <laughs> you can smell the scam a mile away, and yet the aura of this weapon does have something of the legendary about it. <laughs> you open your coin purse only to find you don't have 20,000 gold pieces. <laughs> no money. No sale. He tucks the weapon away once more. The old man kindly warned you of the dangerous monsters outside of town. Child says you should see Nexton as soon as you leave the castle town. You peek inside the carriage shop only to hear the owner call out that they're closed. Guess you won't be making use of them after all. The door is shut tight. You spy a keyhole on it suggesting the existence of a corresponding key. Before you stands a sign calling for people to join the hunt for the dragon. Earlier you saw the bit about the handsome reward for whoever slays the dragon and hightailed it to the castle. A woman stares at the sign, transfixed. Her face curls into a scowl as she notices you. Monster, the woman cries and flings magic at Mar. Startled by the spell, Mar grows dizzy. You gather the dizzy Mar in your arms and glare at the woman. This ain't a monster, you growl, as the woman snarls over you I hate monsters. The two of you bicker for quite a while. In the end, the woman admits she may have jumped to conclusions, but stubbornly refuses to apologize. Inwardly, you call her unsavory names as your attention shifts to a different topic of conversation. Turns out she really hates the dragon and would love to take him down with her own two hands. But she knows she's no match for him alone, so she's at a loss for what to do. When you tell her you're after the same thing, she squints down her nose at you. Fine, she says, I can help you. She's a little annoying, but you are looking for quest companions. I only want to see the dragon dead. I don't care about anything else, she mutters. You overhear her remarks and grin without thinking. Then you don't care about getting a share of the reward. That suits you perfectly, 
You happily join forces with the black-clad woman. She introduces herself as Melanie. She tells you she is a witch, but says nothing of why she hates monsters or what grudge she bears against the dragon. Calling all heroes. Whomsoever slays the dragon shall be handsomely rewarded. How may I help you? The proprietor inquires. Will that be all? The proprietor asks. The woman tells you she's so terrified of what might happen if the dragon attacks the town. She hasn't been able to eat. Welcome to Nexton, hails a man. The man doesn't respond to any question except to parrot back his original greeting. You try asking the man if he knows anything about the dragon. The man's eyes widen. He leans close, cupping his hand to his mouth. Welcome to Nexton, he whispers in your ear. The man helpfully advises you take the opportunity to purchase equipment and curatives while you are in town. A woman sits hunched over by the side of the road. Upon catching sight of you, she calls out for your aid. She sprained her ankle and needs you to take her to the nearby apothecary. You try to lift the woman into your arms, but the weight's too much for you to bear. You lay the woman back down where you found her and mutter a quiet farewell before turning to leave. Upon seeing that, Melanie snaps. What kind of person are you? Ain't like it's my fault she's hurt, you whine like a child. Ignoring you, Melanie gingerly helps the woman up. Mar bends so the woman can get on his back, and the two of them head off in search of the apothecary. Watch them walk away for a moment before following, complaining to yourself about what a waste of time this is.
arrive at the apothecary. After taking a curative, the woman begins hopping up and down. Nothing holds a candle to ivory order medicine, she beams. She thanks you and pulls something from her breast pocket. You've helped someone, albeit not quite out of the goodness of your own heart. It might be a good idea to do that again, should you come across anyone else in need of assistance. Uh, if you do, I'm sure something good will happen. It seems the majority of the world's medicine is made by the Ivory Order. Many people depend on it. That's probably part of the reason the Order has so many ardent supporters. The girl says if you follow this road northwest for a bit, you'll come to Thryston.
Apparently a monster researcher lives in Thryston and might know something about the dragon. It seems you've learned all you can here. Time to move on. On your way to defeat the dragon, are you? The innkeeper inquires as you set foot inside. The innkeeper gives you a room free of charge and a show of support for any and all who wish to defeat the dragon. The party leaves the inn feeling rested. As your eyes roam everywhere but the path you walk, you barrel right into someone. When you turn to see who it is, you see the Ivory Order trio from the castle. Winifred, are you all right? The sagely old man asks the woman, voice full of- I'm fine, the woman called Winifred replies. Thank you, Hedowin. Berwin, the old man calls, turning to their stoic companion. He jerks forward, as if to defend Hedowin and Winifred. The trio advances on you. How dare you treat disciples of the Ivory Order with such disrespect? You fall to your hands and knees, pressing your forehead to the dirt in supplication. I offer my life as restitution, you sob. Winifred stares at you, bewildered you would go to such ridiculous lengths to apologize. Muttering a half-hearted apology, you try to keep walking. But that's when you notice something in your hand. Looks like you accidentally grabbed Winifred's coin purse when you ran into her. Thief! Bellows Berwin, drawing his weapon. Guess you've got to fight your way past. Let's do this. The Ivory Order laid you out flat. The Ivory Order trio looks at you like they can't believe such a weakling would even try to hunt down the dragon. Taking pity on your ineptitude, the Ivory Order trio uses their magic to heal your wounds. We mustn't tarry any longer. To the monster researcher of Thryston with us, Hedowin urges his companions and the trio depart. Here to stay the night, the innkeeper asks, the moment you set foot in the inn.
Aimless wandering can be fun, but if you want purpose and direction, I'd suggest sticking to the path. Fortune favors the bold. With a whoosh of displaced air, something shoots across the path right in front of you. What is that thing? Careful not to attract attention to yourself. You sneak a glance in the direction the thing flew. Yep, monster, just like you thought. 
the monster rolls gleefully across the ground, reminding you of Mar. Your expression softens. Your friends give you strange looks. With a brisk clearing of the throat, you stride away. Fortune favors the bold. a rock down the road, muttering about what jerks those three from the Ivory Order are. Cut it out, chides Melanie. She warns you your anger will only come back to bite you in the rear. <laughs> you grumble, but your sulking is cut short when out of the thicket leaps a monster. The rock you kicked must have hit it because it is really mad. Brace yourself for battle.
surprised to find a merchant selling goods in a place like this. You decide to take a look and the merchant welcomes you energetically. These are my unsold wares. I would be happy to sell to you for a fraction of the price, the old woman says as she lines up some medicine bottles before you. I'm closing for the day, she announces as she packs up her goods. It seems you won't be able to do any more shopping here. spot a small sign off to the side of the fountain. It reads, toss in some coin to have your wishes granted. Your eyes mad with desire. You unleash 300 gold pieces on the poor, unsuspecting fountain. Someone must have heard your wish, for the whole fountain begins to glimmer and gleam. Something floats to the surface of the water.
can't walk on water. Lying in the grass, you find an old telescope. You figure a look at the path ahead can't hurt and pick it up. Peering through the lens, you see something in the distance, but you can't tell exactly what. All you know is there's something up ahead. You should be able to tell for certain what it is if you get closer. Figuring it's best not to go looking for trouble, you decide to detour around it. Still, you can't help wondering what that thing was. journey onward, only to see a suspicious-looking elder appear before you, a bottle of medicine dangling from his waist. He proclaims himself a man of medicine who has discovered a revolutionary new curative. He would have one of your party drink it as a test. There's no harm in trying it, he boldly claims. Well... You take the stranger at his word and drink one of the bottles dry. You gradually begin to feel quite ill. The world spins. You feel yourself coming unmoored. The doctor of sorts eyes the now empty bottle. Well now, drinking it all at once is a fine way to poison yourself, he tells you. Should have led with that, you try to say. But it comes out sounding more like Joseph Zedbert. 